much do you love being advertised to? Marketed to? Sold to? Hopefully a lot, because advertising ain't going anywhere, friends. Hello and welcome to the 10th edition of the Tiny Tennis. I'm your host, Nick Amell, here to cover a top 10-ish list in less than 10-ish minutes. I open today's episode with the question, how much do you love being advertised to? Today we're going to find out which companies you see advertised the most. First, let's take a big step back and look at the big picture to ask, what is advertising? And according to Wikipedia, advertising is the practice and techniques employed to bring attention to a product or service. Advertising aims to put a product or service in the spotlight in hopes of drawing attention from consumers. Advertising has been around forever. It can actually be traced back to ancient civilizations. It became a major force in capitalist economies in the mid-19th century, based primarily on newspapers and magazines. And in the 20th century, advertising grew rapidly with new technologies such as direct mail, radio, television, internet, and mobile devices. But let's go back in time. Egyptians used papyrus to make sales messages and wall posters. Commercial messages and political campaign displays have been found in the ruins of Pompeii and ancient Arabia. Lost and found advertising on papyrus was common in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. As long as people have been able to talk and write, they've been advertising. In ancient China, the earliest advertising known was oral, oh baby, which goes all the way back to the 11th century BC, of bamboo flutes played to sell confectionery. So they'd actually play flutes to say, hey, come buy our confectionery. Maybe we should try that. Maybe I should just stand on the street corner in my local town and just play the flute until people start following me and I'll lead them all the way to the podcast app on their phone to listen to Tennis Podcasts. I'll give it a try and let you know how it goes. Now in Europe, as the towns and cities of the Middle Ages began to grow and the general population was unable to read, instead of signs that read cobbler, miller, tailor, or blacksmith, images associated with their trade would be used, such as a boot, a suit, a hat, a clock, a diamond, a horseshoe, a candle, or even a bag of flowers. So Back in those days when most people couldn't read, you'd look and see an image on a sign to know, okay, that's the fucking cobbler over there. Let me go there. Fruits and vegetables were sold in the city square from the backs of carts and wagons, and their proprietors used street callers or town criers to announce their whereabouts. So people would literally stand on the street and say, hey, there's fruits and veggies over here. It's just interesting to me to think that, you know, you don't think about it. Advertising is one of those things, you know, we all kind of get annoyed of it. We take it for granted. We hate it. We're done with it but it's always been there. And to some extent, it's necessary. Think, I mean, back in the day, before the fucking internet, before television, you had to let people know where and how to buy your shit. And it was helpful because you buying their shit, you needed fruits and veggies, you needed food, you needed clothes, whatever it was. Now let's go all the way to the more modern times. In the United States, newspapers grew quickly in the first few decades of the 19th century in part due to advertising. By the year 1822, the United States had more newspaper readers than any other country, and about half of the content of those papers consisted of advertising, usually local advertising. Now let's all give a standing round of applause for Thomas J. Barrett of London. He's a listener of the show, and he's been called the father of modern advertising. Working for the Piers Soap Company, Barrett created an effective advertising campaign for the company products, which involved the use of targeted slogans, images, and phrases. One of his slogans, quote, Good morning, have you used pear soap today? End quote, was famous in its day and into the 20th century. And in the year 1882, Barrett recruited English actress and socialite Lily Langtree to become the poster girl for pears, making her the first celebrity to endorse a commercial product. So celebrity endorsements go back to the 1800s. Now, by the 1940s, manufacturers began to recognize the way in which consumers were developing personal relationships with their brands. Advertisers began to use motivational research and consumer research to gather insights into consumer purchasing. So, yes, starting around the 1940s, that's when advertisers began to notice, hey, we can tap into the personal psyche of the public to persuade them, sometimes subconsciously, to buy our shit. And that brings us to today, where advertising has evolved with the evolving world to include radio, television, digital, billboards, influencers on TikTok, and everything else you can think of, including saying a word out loud and your fucking phone hearing it, and now you're seeing advertisements for whatever that thing you said was. That's all part of the advertising game today. If there's a place for someone to stick a brand logo for a couple of bucks, they'll do it. 
Today, the global spend for advertising is over $674 billion, with North America as the leader with over $212 billion in advertising spend. North America has almost one-third of the global total in advertising spend. It's out of control. If you're wondering how many ads you see in a given day, research shows that the average number of ads we see per day is around 400, though some say that is a conservative number, especially if you include seeing a logo, for example, on a food item at a grocery store. I mean, it could go way above that. Now, let's talk about the list. Finally, we're going to talk about the top 10 companies that spend the most on advertising per year. The data for today's list comes from Statista, who measured the total ad spend across all channels in the United States in the year 2022. I also pulled some stats from neilpatel.com, adage.com, guideline.ai, and theworldcounts.com, of course, Wikipedia as well. So now, these are the top 10. So in other words, these are the 10 companies you probably love the most, right? Right? Number 10 is Charter Communications, who in 2022 spent $3.3 billion in the United States alone. Charter is the company behind the brand Spectrum, and it's the second largest cable operator behind Comcast. More on them in a minute. And they recently acquired Bright House Networks and Time Warner Cable. So number 10, Charter. Nine is Walmart. $3.4 billion spent in the U.S. on advertising. For more on Walmart, listen to episode number 211 from our main weekly series where we covered the top 10 best-selling products at Walmart. And we talked a lot about Walmart, the corporation, the corporate citizen, etc. in that. Episode 211. Let's go to number eight, which is Verizon Communications, who in U the U.S., spent $3.6 billion on advertising. They have to spend a lot, according to them, to compete against T-Mobile and AT&T. For number seven, I just have one question. What's in your wallet? Capital One spent $3.9 billion in the year 2022, just in the United States. Perhaps their most known ad campaign, What's in Your Wallet? Number six is a competitor to Capital One, and that's American Express, who spent $4.3 billion in advertising this one year. They are one of the earliest users of cause marketing to great success. Uh, a 1983 promotion advertised that for each purchase made with an American Express card, American Express would contribute one penny to the renovation of the Statue of Liberty. Campaign generated contributions of $1.7 million to the Statue of Liberty restoration project. And what would soon capture the attention of marketing departments of major corporations was that the promotion generated approximately a 28% increase in American Express card usage by a consumer. So remember that. Whenever you see a big corporation like American Express say they'll match what you spend or they'll donate a penny for every time you use their card, yes, it's good that that's happening, but they're not doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. They're doing it because, in this case, for American Express, it led to 28% more card usage by their customers. So there's always some ulterior motive there. Much like number five, who surely has ulterior motives, it's Alphabet. And if you don't know that name, it's the company behind Google. They spent $4.4 billion in advertising in the United States. Much of its budget went to Google's extensive collection of TV ad spots, including commercials for Google Search, Pixel Phone, Google Play Store, and YouTube. Number four is our friends at Walt Disney Company, who spent over $5.1 billion in advertising in the United States. Between its movies, theme parks, merchandise, toys, streaming service, and more, it's no surprise to see Disney on this list. And much like we did an episode on Walmart that I mentioned before, we also did an episode on Disney, episode 78 from our main weekly series where we covered the largest revenue-generating segments from Disney's business. Number three is Procter & Gamble, who spent $5.1 billion. If you don't know that name, you should, because they own over 60 brands most of them household and personal care brands, including Charmin, Crest, Dawn, Downey, Febreze, Gillette, Pampers, Tide, and many others you're familiar with. Now let's go to number two. This is the Comcast Corporation, who spent $6.7 billion in advertising in 2022. They own Xfinity Cable. They also maintain ownership of large media companies like NBC, Telemundo, E! and USA Network. And in addition, Comcast owns Film Studio Universal Pictures, and of course, they own Universal Studios theme parks and Islands of Adventure theme parks and resorts. A lot of their ad spend went toward those. So number one, if you don't know number one, you probably haven't been paying attention. Number one, so they've spent $13.5 billion on advertising just in the United States. Remember, number two, Comcast spent $6.7 billion. 
So what is that? About double the spend from number two to number one. Do you know who it is? There's a smile in their logo. Come on. It's Amazon. $13.5 billion in U.S. ad spend. Amazon is number one. Amazon likely doesn't need to spend money advertising their website because everyone uses it, but they still do. And in fact, more people start a product search on Amazon than on Google, according to a 2018 study. So if you need a product, you start on Amazon. But Amazon does spend money promoting their other products and services like Prime Video and Amazon Echo. They also promote their site during peak buying times like Black Friday and Prime Day. That's Amazon. Let's go back through the top 10. These are the companies that spend the most to advertise to you. Number 10, with $3.3 billion, is Charter Communications, the company behind Spectrum. Number 9 is Walmart. Number 8 is Verizon. Number 7 is Capital One. Number 6 is American Express. Number 5 is Alphabet, company behind Google. Number 4 is the Walt Disney Company. Number 3 is Procter & Gamble, the company behind brands like Charmin Crest, Dawn, Downey, Febreze, and more. Number two is Comcast Corporation, who owns all kinds of shit, including Xfinity Cable, uh, Universal Studios, and more. And lastly, number one, Amazon, who has almost double the spend as number two at $13.5 billion just in the United States. Congrats, listener. We've made it to the end of this episode, and I have an action item for you. I need you to donate to my new GoFundMe. I'm doing a GoFundMe to raise $700 billion so I can outspend these corporate advertisers with our own advertising campaign that advertises to them that we're sick of being advertised to. So yeah, watch out for that. In the meantime, thank you for taking this advertising adventure with me today. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider rating us five stars and leaving a review on your favorite podcast app. And if you have specific thoughts about this topic in general, you can always hit me up on social media at TennisPod. And listener, I want you to remember that while the advertising budget of these huge corporate empires is huge, my love for you is also huge. But this episode has been tiny, and I hope you enjoyed it at least a tiny bit. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you soon.